Hi, this is Penny Holbrun from QuiltBlockLibrary.com. Today we're going to work on the Ghost Walk Quilt Block, which is kind of a fun little quilt block and it's pretty easy. Uh, it looks a little complicated because it's got some curves in it and every single patch in the block has a curve, but they're all the same and when you learn how to do curves, you'll be able to do these all day long. So this is a picture of the block and you can see it's a little four patch, so it's got 16 little squares in it and the ghosts, I guess, are these little white things that kind of flop around. So that's the one we're going to do. Let's go over to the sewing machine and start sewing curves together. When you download your pattern from the Quilt Block Library, you're going to get two things in this particular pattern. One of them is the full color picture of the block when it's finished, and then the other one is a template page. The way my computer prints these out, it doesn't have the seam allowances on, so I had to add the seam allowances back as I cut my fabric. But you can use these and just add your quarter inch seam allowance. And that includes adding a quarter of an inch around the curve. The first thing I'm going to do is find the center of this quarter square. And I'm going to do that by folding it in half and putting a pin where the fold is. Then I'm going to fold this piece in half and put a pin in the center where the fold is up there as well. Then I'm going to put these two facing right sides together and kind of make sure that the corners are lined up and that the sides are kind of facing the same direction. I'll take one pin out and then take the other one out and mark that, pin the two together and that marks the center. Then I'm going to fold this around and line up these two edges. And this looks all kind of bunched up and weird, but it'll straighten out as you sew it. And then I'm going to take this side and line up those two edges and pin those. And then I'm going to put a pin halfway between each one of these sides. And that's not matching up exactly right. There we go. So I'll put a pin here. And then I may shift this a little bit because this side has a little more stretch in it than I want it to have. So I'll smooth that out as much as possible and put my pin in. So ideally you'd put, have a pin in the center and then one on each half, so you'd have five pins in here, but I ended up with four and I think that's going to work. So I'm just going to put this under my presser foot and this is going to be slightly less than a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to just hold my fabric flat, and you'll see this is kind of curving around. And as I sew, I'm going to kind of curve that whole thing so that it feeds straight under my presser foot. And now that I'm on this side, I'm going to rearrange my black fabric so that that fold is on the other side of my needle so that I don't sew that tuck in. And I'll take this pin out. and finish sewing that patch together. And that looks pretty pretty good. A lot of the like unevenness you can iron out. As I iron this, what I want to do is fold the seam allowance toward the white side. By folding it this way, that the black fabric is just its natural way and the white is folded on top of itself. So it'll lay flat and, and you won't have to clip any edges. All of the patches are sewn together now. The first thing I'll do is just flip these over so that they're facing right sides together. And since this is conveniently right next to my sewing machine, I'll just pick up one pair at a time and feed them through my machine. Now I've got pairs of patches sewn, two columns of pairs of patches. And in order to get this to the next step, what I'm going to do is lift this group and put it face down on the other group. And then all I need to do is sew these together. All the rows are being held together by these threads that I use to, to chain sew them. So now all I need to do is flip them down and sew the rows together. The top two rows are sewn together now and I've got these bottom two rows. I think the next thing I'm going to do is flip up the very bottom row and sew it to the second to the bottom row. Once I get that sewn together, then 
I'll open it up and be able to sew the top half and the bottom half together. This quilt block is finished now and once I finished it I just took it over to my ironing board and pressed the seam allowances down on the back. Be sure to get your free download of this pattern. We're happy to provide that for the patterns that we do on video and this is Penny Halburn signing off from quiltblocklibrary.com. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.